Is there a good method for forecasting and tracking sales? Welcome to Maximize Business Value Pod Snack, a bite sized version of the Maximize Business Value Podcast, because sometimes you just don't have time for a full podcast meal. Well, first of all, the number one thing is to do it. <laughs> that th this is, I, I kid you not, how many people, you know, uh, this is one of the things I start with. Do you have a sales forecast? No. So how do you know, how do you know? And so I find, and this is, you know, individual people, large groups, whatever, so many people don't even have a sales forecast. So I shared with you earlier, I started my career at Texas Instruments. You know, what do engineering people love? Numbers. Uh, numbers. Numbers. Graphs. Your yeah. graphs. Pictures, yeah, number, oh, spreadsheets, those kind of things. Now, well, at Texas Instruments, they uh, use what they called a rolling forecast. So today is January. So, you know, most people do their forecast January through December. But if we were talking in May, the forecast would begin in May if you didn't have one, but it goes through the next 12 months. And the belief system was that if you, uh, so, you know, what happens to January, then that becomes a report that you have, you can look back on, but the forecast is always 12 months going forward. And uh, there, the, the way they worked was there was no way you could not do it. You know, you had, you know, inside sales, outside sales, you know, you had to do this. Well, so that's how I grew up. Well, the division of TI I worked for sold to another company and the TI management went with them. So we continued to do that. Well, later on, I changed. I went to a different company. And so this was something that we did every Monday morning. You know, every, every salesperson, you just were polite and respectful while Tom gave his report, Debbie gave hers, you know, and all. but you knew you had to have it updated. You couldn't just copy and paste from last week. So anyway, so I go to this other company and they don't do anything, nothing. And here I am one because I, I quit because I was mad at the manager at the other company. But there I was, you know, a week later, hiding over at my desk, making my own sales forecast. And what I tell people about that is, you know, today there's a lot of question about forecasting and using software and different things. And there are great ones out there. But this is an exercise that can be done with pencil and paper and a ruler. And it still can today. There is no excuse not to do a forecast. So what I did, and this is the basis for what I do, is when I start working with somebody and they do not have a forecast, I tell them, if we are going to work together, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a forecast. And, they, you know, they get all nervous and, oh, we don't have, I, I was like, I don't care if you only have two pieces of business. We are going to set up the format, you know, in a generic format, of course, would be suspect, prospect, leads, proposals, customers, you know, very traditional. 12 months out, you know, the next 12 months, and let's get to it. And you start filling it in. Well, what happens with that is, so thinking about the individual that I might be working with, who's never had one, I send them away week one with this template, if you will. And we've been through exactly what to do and, you know, how to do it. But I don't go back to the office with them and do their homework with them. So they show up the next week for the meeting and they have this. Now, I oftentimes ask people, you know, so what are your, you know, what would you like your sales to be this year? And, you know, somebody says, well, I would like them to be a million dollars. I don't care what the number is. That's great. But they go away and they do this forecast and they document everything they really know, including suspects. And they come back and in the bottom grand total right-hand column, it says, three million. So I say to them, do you want to do three or one? I'm good either way. And they're just like, Debbie, I had no clue. And so then we can be able to create a plan on how we can get that. Or maybe we sort out our suspects and realize they're not exactly the ones we want. We want some other ones. But now we know if we only had 10 more of these other ones that do like this, 
you know, then we wouldn't need these other 40 that aren't as profitable or aren't, you know, exactly the right criteria. And so I believe that a rolling forecast is the key to success. And I will tell you one thing that just happened last year. So I have taught this to everyone that I have worked with. I even wrote a book because of this, because I just feel like this is the key. And one of the gentlemen, he told me he had a forecast and we kind of went through this and all. And, and basically what he was doing was going, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, you're an adult, you know, so great. You've got it. You've got it. So come back next week. He sends it to me. It is the Texas Instruments deal. It is exactly what I had learned. And I looked at it, you know, he was, we were on a Zoom and it was like, he said, are you okay? I said, I, I have been doing this over 20 years. I have never had anybody that had the forecast, like I'll put, you know, like I said, where did you learn? I did not realize he too had worked at Texas Instruments early in his career. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. So his issue wasn't his forecasting, but it was, you know, in helping with other things about sales. But yeah, so most people just simply don't have it. So they don't know where they are. So they don't know what their target is. They don't know uh, what they want. You know, they don't know what they have. You know, they don't really understand what they have and the profitability. So, you know, they, they're just floundering out there and just doing this one thing alone to look at what you know, not what not something you're going to have in six months but what do you know today? And they realize they know a lot more than they thought they did. And so then they can have targeted activities to begin to make these things happen or let them go. I, I love that. You know, you, you can't manage it if you don't measure it, right? I exactly. Mean, that's, that's in our, our old adage. And uh, just a quick side story on how I was able to use that. I, I'm in the same camp. You know, we forecast sales always. And I've even though I've spent most of my career sitting behind the CEO desk of the companies that I've that I've owned and run, um, I I started in sales, right? I started in, and so I developed really great habits uh, back in those early years. And uh, because I was always tracking sales and measuring it and monitoring it and forecasting on that, my forecasts were always good, right? I always knew. And, and at the point where I'd grown a company and we were taking on investors and I needed to report on what we were going to be able to accomplish in the next three and six, nine, 12 months, I knew I could do that uh, because we, we relentlessly track that information. I knew to a salesperson, how accurate they could forecast their business. Uh, and so I could apply those metrics, you know, um, uh, just a, a, in our key accounts group in my last company, we had three different sales organizations. One was, you would, you might call them inside sales. They're the folks that are, um, uh, we called them our customer relationship folks. Uh, they're the ones who were mining existing customers for more business. Right. Um, I, we had our new account guys, which were out there finding new, uh, you know, individual or up to up to 25 locations that they were bringing. And then we had our key account folks. And, and I could tell you in each one of those different groupings, how accurate their forecasting was uh, based on, you know, where we were. You coming into the quarter and, and I get a forecast from the key account groups. I knew how to apply a factor and I was going to be within a hundred dollars of where they were going to end. Why? Because I measured it and tracked it and paid very close attention uh, to those details. And, and it was okay for me, for them to forecast the way they were, even though it was off and I was applying a different number to it, but I know I could count on it. I could almost take that money to the bank. Uh, because I knew how they forecasted and did that. But the only way I could do that was measuring it. Mm -hmm. Good. Are you hungry for more? Check out our next pod snack, or you can enjoy the Value Size Maximize Business Value podcast wherever you found this podcast.